So it's been a really long time since I last made an Asperger's related video, but for some reason my YouTube suggestions lately has been throwing at me endless videos about Asperger's in females, how it's different, why it's different, why female brains kind of adapt to Asperger's and show Asperger's traits in completely different ways. And it's been really interesting that, yes, although I do not identify as female biologically, I am 100% female and, like many females with Asperger's, I was not diagnosed until way too late. And many of my Aspie traits are masked because the things that I've been learning from all these videos is that female brains being kind of better adapted to social stuff and the fact that we, we tend to be a bit more kind of empathetic, we're better at picking up on social cues and things like that, which obviously are kind of the opposite of most Aspie traits. The Aspie traits are not being able to read social cues, having all these misunderstandings, being a bit socially shit, basically. And uh, female Aspies tend to be better at, and they call it masking, literally masking the symptoms that we learn to imitate and mimic very well social traits and as a result people see you and they don't necessarily think you're an Aspie and uh, I've even had it like quite a bit on videos where I've mentioned having Asperger's you will get the occasional freaking armchair psychologist being like ah girl you show no signs of Asperger's you have been badly misdiagnosed you need to go back to your doctor and get yourself diagnosed with something completely different because I'm telling you you don't have Asperger's and, don't you just love those people who really think it's it's some kind of professional wisdom to try and genuinely diagnose a person with a with a mental illness via seeing them in a YouTube video and then they call themselves a professional hmm so uh, you know you do get that but what i really want to talk about is masking as a female with Asperger's and how, yes, we can be very good at it, but the thing is, it's completely bloody exhausting. And the reason I wanted to make this video tonight is that uh, actually right now, at this precise moment, I am supposed to be way across the city at a friend's wedding and uh, uh, feeling quite bad about not being at this friend's wedding. Uh, got ready, put on makeup, going to the wedding, however uh, mentally exhausted, cannot deal with the going outside, the uh, dealing with two trains, crossing the city, lots of trains, uh, Saturday night, lots of people on the trains, all this, this being outside with other people and uh, 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 mentally exhausting, can't deal with it. But I, I have this quite a lot where it'll be like a Saturday night or whatever, you get ready to go out and then you just you're just too tired, you just do not have the mental energy to, to deal with it. But on those nights, usually I will still end up staying up for most of the night, sometimes having a dance around in my clubbing clothes. So, so basically doing all clubbing activities, staying up very late. So to, to like a neurotypical's idea of too tired to go out, it, it doesn't make sense. You know, they're like, bitch, you are up all night, you were up all night, you got dressed, you took selfies, you were on YouTube, I saw what you were doing, like, how could you say you were too tight, this is really flaky, why didn't you come to the thing? And, uh, and it's because it's a specific sort of tired, and I, I suspect a lot of you kind of know what I'm talking about here, that, I mean, this, this does cross over with introversion and things, you know, and social anxiety and things like that as well. Um, but I feel like with with Asperger's and with these videos that I've seen recently about masking, that I'm like, dude, is this it? Because all my life I've described myself as an extroverted introvert, in that if you see me out in public, you, you would never <laughs> go, oh, that's an introvert, because I'm very, very loud. I talk a hell of a lot. I talk probably too much. I like to get up and dance and uh, a bit, quite a big, loud, loud person, quite flaily, flang my arms around quite a lot when I'm talking. I've got quite big and loud, but I will only be there <laughs> for a maximum of about two to three hours. Then I will go home and you will not see me probably for weeks uh, because it's, it's like I, I can go out and do the thing, but it's exhausting and I, I can't be doing that too much. And I always just thought that this was like, you're just a bit of a weird introvert. 
But having seen these videos, I'm realising it is. It's the masking thing. It's the fact that if if you're an Aspie, even even if you have a female brain, which is is better at social cues and better at, at mimicry and all of this, you still basically are running on a computer which is shit at social interaction. Therefore, female brains, they download patches. They download lots of patches to cover up their basic shitness, which means they can run the program socialinteraction.exe. However, you are running so many system files to make this work that your computer is going <laughs> and pretty soon it, it, it kind of crashes, blue screen of death, and, and you have to go home. This is the best way I can put it, really, is, is that's what happens. And um, it, it, social interaction kind of feels like a performance, I think, is, is another good way to put it. Um, and I, 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 don't, I don't think... Because, I mean, you, you obviously, social interaction being a performance, this can come with all mental illnesses. I mean, obviously, a good example is comedians, that comedians often are very miserable, depressed, fucked up people. I mean, Bill Hicks is a great example. I'm sure Bill Hicks was, uh, you know, towards the end of his career, was this, this ball of bitterness. Um, and I'm sure in his private life, he was not fun to be around. But, um, you know, on stage, he would get up and, and do all of this funny stuff. And people with depression often are like this, that they cover it with comedy. And it's it's all a bit of a performance. Um, so it's, it's not purely an Asperger's thing. But I think with, with Asperger's, it, it's multi-layered. It's not just, I'm going to go out, pretend to smile, not talk about my problems, joke about everything. It's it's everything. Everything is is a lie. It's lies upon lies upon lies, uh, as as to how you interact with people and all the all the things that you're subconsciously doing that you've subconsciously learned to do with the way you look at people and the way you angle your body towards people to show certain things and all the things that you're not consciously thinking probably. I mean, maybe if you're younger, you are consciously still thinking these things. If you're about my age, you're not consciously thinking oh don't don't you know don't don't cross your arms that's that's quite defensive you're, you're probably not thinking these things you're doing them, but on some level your brain is running the system file it's it's going on and eventually it's all going to crash and uh this kind of makes sense with the ways that i prefer to socialize that i have always preferred socializing and felt most relaxed socializing one-on-one -on -one with like one person at a time which has often been problematic with relationships, given most of my friends tend to be male. So then when they get a girlfriend and the girlfriend gets insecure about him hanging out with another girl, one-on-one, -on -one, so then she wants to come along or it's like I'm only allowed to see him in group situations and I don't like that. Like, I, I prefer to get to know one person properly and to be able to actually have proper conversations rather than, you know, the kind of crappy, shallow, meaningless group chit-chat that you get in big groups, which I, I think Asperger's people particularly hate, um, just because it's, it seems so meaningless to us. And it, it, but more than that, I think I'm realising that my the fact I find group situations far more exhausting makes sense if, if you realise that you are doing this masking, this kind of mimicry thing, if you're hanging out with one person at once, the only vibe you've really got to kind of channel into is theirs. You know, it's only one person to deal with. It's one person's vibe and level to get on. Whereas when you're in a group, I think you're kind of constantly switching channels a bit more, trying to trying to keep up with all the different forms of mimicry that you have to be doing with different people and their different vibes and their different energies. And, and yes, obviously, the stupid small talk that goes on, the, the Asperger's people, we're, we're not, we're not good at that stuff. It's, it's, I, I think, I think appropriate small talk I think it probably is like the number one, the number one symptom of someone probably being a bit aspy is when they just really can't do appropriate chit chat. Obviously another Asperger's thing is having very obsessive narrow interests. So generally speaking, when we have conversations that we enjoy, they are 
really passionate, really kind of over-enthusiastic, very narrow, quite geeky conversations about whatever it is that we're obsessed with this week. So to, to spend hours in a pub with, with, with several people talking about nothing, you know, nothing that anyone's really interested in, it, it kind of blows our minds that, you know, generally speaking, if, if, if we have something that we really want to talk about, that it's something really enthusiastic, we're, we're not so good with with minor interests because we don't really have minor interests, you know, we, we don't don't really have kind of, oh, you know, did, did you see the Grand National the other week, you know, uh, didn't really bet on it, but, you know, it's, it's a thing that happens and people seem to be vaguely, we, we don't really have these, these, these minor interests, we have a few things that we are obsessive about and small talk, we, we can't really do it, but yeah, it's mass social interaction, tapping into all different, different people's different vibes, you're switching, switching gears with your masking all the time, and that probably explains why I really hate group interaction so much. I mean, I, I like clubbing, I do like clubbing a lot, but mostly because I kind of slither in and out. I, I always go by myself uh, because I hate giving people lifts. This is a whole, a whole other Aspie issue, um, but um, I, I like to be 100% in control about it, you know, we, we do not like change, we don't like unpredictability, all of that. Um, so if I'm going somewhere and my my arrangements revolve around other people, oh my god, good luck to those people, because I will be that person on Facebook who has like a thousand questions about, you know, where does the train go, what time is the train, uh, where do I have to change, what is the sign going to say on the train, um, <laughs> what time do we get there, what food is there, what drinks, what time are we leaving, uh, does anyone know what the weather's going to be like, uh, but, but I have like a million questions because I have to know, I have to know all the things that can be no unpredictability so it's always easier if I just drive my fucking self and I can leave whenever I feel like it and everything is completely in control and I don't give anyone lifts because they can throw everything out so usually clubbing drive myself there so I'm you know I arrive whenever I feel like it on my own and I slither around the club and if I you know if I see people I talk to them but I am not committed to talking to them you know if you go with people you have to stay until they want to leave you have to hang around with them you know and then if it gets awkward what do you do what do you do what do you do whereas if you're if you're a, a lone entity <laughs> you can slither in and out and you can talk for as long as it's interesting then you can fuck off and clubbing you can always dance there's usually multiple rooms that you can wander around and I like that, that it's it's mostly a solo adventure with just a little bit of social interaction. Um, whereas pubs, I don't do pubs very often because, you know, you sit down. Oftentimes you sit down at a table, so they're like people on either side of you, a table in front of you. You can't get out without moving the other people. You're trapped there. And uh, sometimes there's loud music. It makes it quite hard to, to hear. Misunderstandings happen. It's all very awkward. And group interaction is it's super draining, super not not interesting to me. But I think another factor with this this masking, uh, all of this 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 exhaustion that we have from social interaction, is not just the social interaction, as in talking to people, but simply being out in public around other people. That I've seen someone with Asperger's talk about how they find eye contact, that for them, eye contact, looking at someone in the eye and having someone looking back at them straight in the eye, it, it's, it's like burning to them. It's like someone staring at them with like lasers for eyes burning into their skull. And as a result, you know, they tend to look at kind of like the, the end of someone's nose or like just between their eyebrows or something like that, because looking them in the eyes like this burning thing. And uh, yeah, I, I don't have that eye contact is not really a huge freaky thing to, I really hate it when it's like some kind of romantic thing, like eye contact during sex. <sighs> no, that's horrible. I hate that. But, um, but in general, eye contact, not bothered. However, being around other people in general, because today when I was thinking, come on, can I, can I get to this wedding? Can I go? The, the, the real visual that was in my head about, oh, this bit's going to be awful was the fact that I had to change from one train to another train station 
walk across the city center on a Saturday night when you always get people like chucking random comments at you or there's like drunk people talking to you on the trains and stuff like that so there's there's people around who you don't know who are quite loud and rowdy and often try and involve you in conversations and much as I usually love talking to strangers I have to be in the mood for it. If I don't have the mental energy to deal with other people, that is the thing. Um, and it's like, it's, it's my, my comfort zone in general. Obviously my local town, you know, the streets that I can walk around that are near to my house, that doesn't feel super intense. But the minute I kind of get into the city and there are lots of people around and it takes a long time to get home, there's a lot of unpredictability, quite a long way away from my little rabbit hole, um, that all becomes quite, quite intense. That That's the point at which I do feel a little bit like a peeled snail thrown in the sea, <laughs> you know, it's it's all all a bit salty, the saltiness of other people and their, their, their personalities and their vibes and their energy all sort of burning my skin. That's that's the thing um, that I think is 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 the thing for me that it's it's not even just people who are talking to me. I mean, say you're on a train. If there's someone else in the carriage, even if they're completely minding their own business and reading a book and not looking at me once, I can still feel that they're there. And it's still quite disquieting in many ways that you still kind of have to be sort of in performance mode. I, I, I feel like even, even if you're not talking to someone, there's the potential of them talking to you. They're, they're, they're simply there. And, uh, and that's the thing. This is sounding increasingly weird. Um, <laughs> but but it was like last summer, I really... Last summer was so amazing because I realised in summer that the sun rises at about four o'clock in the morning. So you can often stay up all night and then you can go out at four o'clock in the morning and there is not a soul around anywhere, you know, so you can like go to the park, you can go to the woods, you can walk around the streets, you can drive around, you can run around, you can get stoned, you can wander around, and it's like beautiful, it's beautiful, beautiful with the sunrise and the mist and everything, it's gorgeous, but the main thing is, it's like perfect Aspie world because there are no people anywhere, because to me, leaving the house at all, ever, um, I always always have to have a certain level of mental energy to deal with it. Um, so, and I think this is one of the reasons that I have rarely been the kind of person that goes out and gets really, really wasted in a club, particularly on any kind of downer. So like alcohol or ketamine uh, or even weed, um, I don't tend to get absolutely wasted at a club. I've never been comfortable being really, really unsober around other people. I've always felt like I have to have enough faculties around me to get myself home and to deal with myself. I am not comfortable being kind of, kind of just bleh. Um, out in public. So if I'm at home and I'm like a little bit stoned or a little bit higher, I, I just, just feel a little bit tired. I, going outside makes me very, very nervous because I feel like I don't have the faculties to deal with it. Whereas at dawn, you know, when there's no one around or in the middle of the night and there's no one around, the world is all mine and I can wander about it. I don't have to worry about people. And uh, yes, it makes, it makes me think Asperger's people were we put on earth uh, some strange form of evolution so that if ever a terrible apocalypse comes and, uh, and it ends up like I am legend or something where the, you know there's like one person left in the world and uh, I think we'd be really good at that and we'd probably sounds dark but we'd probably really enjoy it just having like the whole world the whole world to roam around um but the the weird thing is that I mean, you, you tell me I'm intrigued to hear people's responses, but um, males I've known with Asperger's, yes, they tend to be more noticeably socially awkward. Uh, they, they tend to be worse at picking up boredom cues. So men with Asperger's 
tend to be the ones who get onto their favourite subject, their favourite geeky subject, be it music or particular fanfic or whatever, fanfic fandom, um, you know, whatever their, their favourite thing is, they will get onto that subject and they almost take pride in how boring they're being. They don't pick up on the fact that people are kind of you know, looking around and, and really getting bored and really trying to change the subject, they don't care about that. They actually kind of enjoy it because it means they know more about it than the other person. The other person doesn't know as much. Look, they're, they're, you know, they're, 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 not, they're not conversing with me anymore. I've clearly out-geeked them. And they tend to be quite, quite proud of, of being obsessive, boring, if anything. Um, which, which females with Asperger's, yeah, they, we tend to be better at I think, you know, as a generalisation, obviously, all generalisations are false, including this one. Um, <laughs> but in general, I think we're better at picking up on those subtle cues. And if anything, I, I find I'm paranoid about boredom cues. Like, I, I lately, and I really feel like this has killed my friendships, the fact that I'm so worried about boring people that I basically never talk about anything that matters to me anymore. I just ask people questions and let them rabbit on about themselves endlessly and actually it's amazing how many neurotypical people don't pick up on boredom cues either because they too will rabbit on about themselves endlessly and you you leave feeling like this person doesn't give a shit about me they they just talked my face off about whatever for hours um but uh y y tangent rant um but yeah so i i think females in general better at better at socializing but i feel like ooh, it makes us more withdrawn like the, the guys i know with asperger's tend to actually be quite socially outgoing they tend to have quite a good social life they see people a lot they hang out a lot whereas the females i know with asperger's do tend to be more antisocial that we do go clubbing and stuff but we don't talk to people for long we don't stay for long we don't hang out with people for long most of our interaction is online and we, we can be really really passionate with online friendships and we you know we honestly we are like brilliant friends to have online because we're always in the computer and we're always there for people and it's like the one time that we're good at socializing because it's on our hours there's none of the intensity of the person being in the room and none of the confusion of the weird social cues so we, we actually get to be really quite good friends to people online but when it comes to actually pinning us down to meet up in real life not so good at that and i, I think that's because it's so exhausting for us that we're doing all of this this performance to to be a a social creature whereas the guys don't do that so they're more awkward but it's more relaxing for them so they're they're more social than us i mean is that is that just my experience and other people find the complete opposite but uh, you tell me anyway I, th I think i've reached the end of my tangential thoughts on this but um yeah i mean it's it's interesting that really the one time in my life where i was a really outgoing person and really went out a lot um was when i was doing lots and lots of stimulants <laughs> and that meant that other people basically became trip toys to me um because it was like it, you know I, the high was more important than going out but it was fun it was fun to chatter when i was high like i guess i just had more mental energy to babble at people and it was way more fun to babble at people than to sit on the computer and type you know so that that was a few years of my life where i was really outgoing and i was you know I was always going out all the time but uh, the minute i stopped doing that uh it's like no, this is tiring and, and that's that's quite a difficult thing to deal with, I think, when it comes to not doing lots and lots of drugs. But because you realise actually was that like literally a better version of me that you find you can do these neurotypical things, you can go out every weekend, you can socialise and you can hang out with people and you want to do it like you know it's it's not like the average aspie weekend where it's like you have plans they sound great on a monday when you make them for the next weekend you're so into it as an idea gets to the weekend and you actually have to go do it and you're like i really don't want to now but yeah it's it's weird that yes you on lots of stimulants can deal with with people with people and then and then sober 
You know, although although people preach all these things that oh my god, drugs are terribly always always better without them. It, oftentimes it's not actually true. I mean, how how do you judge when when you're a better person? You know, if if you've got more time for your friends and more energy for your friends and you're going out and living this social life and doing all these things is is that you as a better person because but I, I mean well i mean that that's that's a whole other kind of worms really isn't it is is where drugs overlap with medication because i think you know i think you get aspies who have adhd probably they probably are prescribed some sort of amphetamine and, you know, so is there a crossover with them and with it helping them to socialise and things like this that, uh, I mean, I, I think there are a lot of Aspies out there who self-medicate in, in strange ways to uh, to help themselves with with having the energy to and the motivation to socialise with people and oh I've talked for a very very long time so I'm going to shut up now because this has been a big tangential waffle but uh yes tonight feeling peeved about the I'm dressed I'm dressed and, uh, and I'm sitting here talking and being social sort of but the idea of actually going out into the world where there are other people with their vibes and that whole peeled snail feeling of being around other people and having to having to perform and be on all the time and it's so draining and I can't do it. And uh, yes, you tell me, um, are you a male Aspie who feels that you also do this? That you also feel you have to kind of that you've learned to perform and to mimic, but it's exhausting. Uh, are you a female Aspie who isn't exhausted by social interaction? I don't know, you tell me things. And, and yes, my, my generalisation that uh, male Aspies a bit more crap socially, but they tend to enjoy it more, whereas females more, more fluid, more kind of polished socially, better at hiding it, but it's exhausting, so you never see us. That, that's that's my my generalisation. Tell me if I'm right or not. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. And, uh, go away. And, uh, my God, it's only 11 o'clock. If I'd gone, I, I would have gone. I would be back by now. And, uh, but it, it would have been so much more tiring than, than not going, oh, oh, life is weird. Life is weird. Anyway, I'm going away now. Bye-bye. <laughs>